Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the background styling options available in Oxygen. I've already set up a quick example page, and for this video, we'll be using a section. Let's start by selecting our section and going to Advanced, Background in the Properties pane. And the first thing we'll see is background color. This allows you to set a color for the background of the section. Next, we have background image. So you can upload any image you'd like or use one from the media library by clicking browse. If you're not sure where to get good free stock images, there are two places I like to use. One is pexels.com and one is unsplash.com. Both of these have a great selection. For this example, I'm going to use pexels. So let's just grab one of these photos download it and then jump back over to oxygen and then I'll just click and drag it from my downloads bar and once it's uploaded we can hit select image now you can see the image is the background of this section note that you'll want to optimize any photos that you use as backgrounds or images in general on your site because if they're very very large like some of these are from these stock photo websites they will load slowly the next option we have is image overlay color. This is really useful when you're dealing with white text on a light background like this or dark text on a dark background. So let's select this text and since our image is lighter, we'll go to a white text. And as you can see, the contrast is not great. So let's select our section, go to advanced background and let's set an image overlay color of something like black with some transparency. In this way, we can darken the image to increase the contrast. Next, let's take a look at background size. By default, background images are set to cover, which means the image will be resized to cover the whole area of the section. You can also set it to contain, which will cause the image to be constrained to the dimensions of the section, or manual, and you can specify your own dimensions. You can also set it to auto, which generally is not going to work very well for an image background like this. But cover is the best bet in most cases and is responsive. Next, we have background repeat. So for this example, I'm going to grab a pattern background from subtlepatterns.com. And this is a great website to grab some really nice patterns. We'll just grab something super obvious here. Um, how about this? Go ahead and unzip it real quick. And then let's jump over to Oxygen and let's browse on the background image field. And then we're going to select files from the computer. And here we have it. Select image. And now that pattern background will be used for the background image. But cover generally is not a good option for pattern backgrounds and the background size. Generally, you'll want to use auto, which will change it to the size that it looks best at. You can also use manual if you want to make it smaller. But generally for pattern backgrounds, I'm going to use auto. Next, repeat is on by default, which is why this pattern is covering the entire section. But if you set it to no repeat, you can see that it only covers part of the section. Actually, let's remove this image overlay and you can change it to only repeat on the x-axis or the y-axis but in general repeat is going to cover most of your bases and auto for background size when using patterns as your background images so the next setting we want to look at is this background attachment parallax setting to illustrate this i'm going to jump back to a photo and we're going to set the background size to cover and the background repeat to default. There it is. Just takes a second to load because I did not optimize that image at all. So it's very large. Um, so background attachment parallax uh, allows you to change the attachment of the background. So by default, it's scroll, which means it scrolls with the rest of the page. If you change it to fix, then the background image does not scroll when you scroll the page, which gives you kind of this uh, peeking through a window effect which is very popular in a lot of modern design. Note that some combinations of background size cover 
and background attachment fixed uh, do not work on mobile devices. So you'll have to be uh, aware of those limitations. But on desktops, this is a really nice effect and super easy to achieve. So let's go back to scroll and let's look at the next settings which is the left and top position values so these allow you to alter the position of the image background so if we put something like 100 pixels in you can see that it's pushing it over to the right by 100 pixels you can also do negative values to move it left and because we have repeat on we're seeing a repetition of the image uh, if we say no repeat you'll see just the background color one common way that these left and top position values are used is by um, is to center a background image responsively. So if we change the units here from pixels to percentage and set the left to 50% and the top to 50%, that's going to center the image responsively across all device widths. So if you have something, an image where the focal point needs to remain in view, and it's in the middle of the image, then use left and top 50% and it will keep that image centered for you. So the background clip setting, which is the next one we'll talk about, is a little tricky to illustrate, but I'll just go over very quickly what these settings mean. So border box means the background will extend to the outer edge of the element's border. Padding box means the background extends to the inner edge of the element's border. And content box, the background extends to the beginning of the elements padding. So those are very situational and very seldom used, but they're available if you end up needing them. The next setting we're going to talk about is the background blend mode drop down. This allows you to set how an element's background image should blend with the element's background color or gradient. So to illustrate this, we're going to go ahead and add a background color. Uh, right now it's white, but let's pick something a little more festive like red and then we'll just go through some of these blend modes so a very common one is multiply which will kind of colorize the photo and darken it a little bit um, but there are a lot to go through and it just depends on what you need there are a lot of effects here some of them are really kind of crazy looking and you may never use them but they're available if you need them so let's get away from that um, Multiply is probably the most useful one here uh, for most applications because as you can see it adds some color which is nice for infusing a brand color into the photo and it also darkens the background for some higher contrast with your uh, overlaid elements like light colored text. So let's set this back to uh, no blend mode and let's talk about the video background option. So in Oxygen uh, sections allow you to set a video background, but these do have to be self-hosted MP4 or WebM files. So you need to download the video from somewhere first. Um, there are two places where you can get really nice stock videos for free. One is cover.co, that's cover with two R's, .co, and they have a lot of really nice options. The one I use a lot is videos.pexels.com and they have some some really nice options as well so we'll just grab one really quick uh, try to grab a smaller one maybe this let's download that and let's jump back over to oxygen and let's browse for a video and i'm going to go ahead and go to upload files and drag our video file in there and hit select video and now you can see we have a video background you can also choose to hide the video below certain viewport widths. This is useful because videos are typically larger files and on mobile devices you really want to optimize the size of files that are being downloaded by the viewer. So you can hide this video at these viewport widths that we've provided. Uh, another thing to note is that some mobile browsers just don't play that well with HTML5 videos. So it may be best to hide these at a certain viewport width, which means that it should fall back to the background image or background color at that point. So let's jump back up to full width. And you can also apply a video overlay to video backgrounds, which is the same as the uh, image overlay and just allows you to apply a transparent color and tint the video. Now we do have a video going over gradients in more detail, but I will just cover them briefly here. So let's get rid of this download and let's open up the gradients after we delete this overlay. 
Let's open up the gradients here and our gradient tool is really nice and easy to use. You can do linear or radial, define the angle and let's add a couple colors here. Let's choose maybe a pink color and a blue color, kind of a cotton candy effect. And then we'll need to get rid of this uh, video background in order for us to see the gradient effect. All right, there we go. So next, we can go in and adjust our gradient colors to be transparent. This is a very common use of these gradients. It's kind of a gradient overlay effect. So let's adjust that down a little bit and then change our blue as well. You can use these gradients uh, for a lot of cool effects. Let's change the angle a little bit. Um, but again, we, ha we do have a video going over these in greater detail. So I'm just gonna you know, show you the basics here. Um, that's pretty much it for our background effects. And this should give you everything you need to start making great backgrounds for your sections and other elements in Oxygen. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team and thank you for watching.